I Speechcrafter. I hope you are enjoying the program, because I certainly am. The purpose of this video is to help you organize your speech. But before I get into the details of how you do that, I would like to tell you a short story. I was in my late 20s when I had to present a five-year business plan to the divisional CFO of my company. I'd been working on the plan together with our MD for weeks, and finally I got to present it. I was so excited, because I would present a plan that would show incredible growth, and I felt that the numbers were actually pretty well achievable. After all, the market we were operating in was just opening up, and we couldn't seem to satisfy the customer demand. The day came. And I had rehearsed thoroughly, I felt. The meeting started. The MD introduced me, and I started. Dear CFO, you know how we have done the last five years. So let me show the numbers to you for the next five years. And then I began. Revenues will grow 65% next year. Needless to say, the CFO stopped me. Soren, give me a bit of context instead of jumping directly into the numbers. And I think I was lucky that I could do that off the cuff and save my ass my job because I made a big mistake. My presentation was not organized properly. I jumped right into the main body instead of beginning with a proper opening to give the CFO the background. I tell you this story to show that every presentation needs a proper structure. A structure that's fit for purpose, let's say. A well-organized presentation is easier for the audience to understand. The audience wants to know what your speech is about and what points you are making. It is easier to remember a well-organized speech because the points are clearer. When you take the time to organize your presentation, you will also appear more credible and knowledgeable. And finally, the audience will enjoy a well-crafted speech more because they are being led through it from beginning to end. Organize your, your speech helps you too. When you plan the points you want to make and in the order you want to make them, you will be less likely to forget anything and your presentation will be more effective. In Speechcraft, we normally teach a structure comprising of a strong opening, a body with three to four points, and a powerful closing. I will not give you more detail here, as you can read about this in the Success Workbook. Instead, there's another structure that I would like to share with you. It is a structure that is commonly used to create connection, to inspire and to persuade. You've encountered this structure countless times in your life, from when you were a child until today. It is the storytelling structure. We start with the status quo. The protagonist is living some kind of normal life, but has a greater desire or goal in life. This is usually the first part of the story, but not always. Then something happens, sometimes called a catalyst. This is an event that sets the story in motion, forcing the protagonist out of the comfort zone. When the protagonist is out of her comfort zone, we can have rising action. The protagonist pursues the goal and is tested along the way. And then we have the all is lost moment, where the protagonist believes that she has failed. But then there's the resolution, where she A, gets what she wants, or B, don't get what she wants, or C, don't get what she wants, but realizes that she has something that is more important. Santiago Munez, a Mexican immigrant living in Los Angeles, is a skilled footballer who plays for his local team and works the same time as a gardener with his father, Hernan. During one of his matches, Santiago is approached by Glenn Foy, a former player and scout for Newcastle United, who helps arrange a trial with the club. To afford to travel to England, Santiago saves his earnings, which is later used by Hernan to buy a truck for the business, being dismissive of Santiago's chances as becoming a professional. Santiago's grandmother, Mercedes, secretly hands him her personal savings and urges him to depart for England before Hernan can find out. Arriving in Newcastle, Santiago stays with Glenn and begins his trial. In muddy conditions, Santiago struggles. Although unimpressed, the club's manager agrees to Glenn's request that Santiago's trial last for at least a month. 
During a medical, Santiago lies about his asthma to the club nurse, fearing that it'll damage his chances of being signed. He is then given a one-month contract. Despite some challenges, Santiago soon adapted to the English conditions, and a reserve match was scheduled at the end of his trial to determine his signing on a full-time basis. Before the match, Santiago tries to use his inhaler, and a teammate destroys it, leading to an asthma flare-up. After a disappointing performance, Newcastle lets Santiago go. On his way to the airport, Santiago's taxi picks up Gavin Harris, an undisciplined, struggling, yet talented player who recently joined Newcastle. Gavin, late for training, finds out about Santiago's asthma and informs the club's manager. The manager lets Santiago stay, contingent on him seeking treatment for his asthma. Santiago then moves in with Gavin, and they form a friendship. After impressive performances in the reserves, Santiago makes his debut for the first team, coming on as a substitute against Fulham. Santiago earns a penalty, which helps them win the match. A proud moment that is seen by Santiago's father, Hernan. I hope you recognize the status quo, the something happens, the rising action, and the all is lost moment. And finally, the resolution. This is the storytelling approach. I encourage you to try both the basic structure and the storytelling structure during this program. And I look forward to seeing them in action with you. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.